Hey YouTube, here's Heiko, reporting from my garage in particular, um, standing in front of my Craftsman 113.27520 table saw. Uh, this is a pretty old one. Uh, the table saw is, I don't know exactly, probably from the 60s. Um, if anyone knows exactly and you want to look that up, um, please let me know down in the comments. So I, I've uh, not restored, but uh, brought the table saw back to a state, a state that you can actually use it. So it's a cast iron top with a cast iron extensions. It has a Paralog 2 fence system on it, which is also probably from the 90s. Um, made that all work together again, adjusted it, made it all straight and clean and polished the top and uh, a nice layer of uh, paste wax on here. And then I was looking into making this uh, table saw a little safer. You know, new table saws like the saw stop, they have a mechanism that as soon as uh, this table saw blade touches something that conducts electricity, uh, the, the blade retracts so that you don't chop off your finger. Old saws, they really didn't have much when it came to safety at all. They had a regular flip on off switch. I um, added a, a safety pedal switch to it. So now I can turn the saw off with my knee if I have to. So if something goes wrong up here and I have both hands involved, I can push this with my hand, uh, correction with my knee. And then I was looking into uh, riving knives and splitters and that kind of stuff to um, reduce the risk of having kickback and uh, there's not much available for those old table saws. Um, there's a company that um, makes a little splitter kit that you can add at the end of your um, insert here. So it's kind of a stationary thing, it's non-adjustable um, and really only works as long as you do 90 degree cuts as soon as you um, change it to an angle it doesn't doesn't work so i looked into the shark guard which is um, kind of an aftermarket provider of splitters and um, guards and stuff and um, uh, i send them an email asking if they have a kit specifically for this model of craftsman table saw they already have a couple listed or I want to say three or four craftsmen models listed on their webpage and have kits available and uh, they vary in price a little bit. Um, so I sent them an email and asked about my particular model and then um, one of the company representatives, uh, his name is Lee, he responded really quickly and he said that uh, a while back he actually had someone uh, he was working with to come up with a kit for this old type 1960s type craftsman saw but uh, uh, I guess they never really finished the development of it and so what he did he just sent me paper templates of uh, the three different splitters that usually comes with a kit yeah let me take the other one off there um, so he he already had some sort of an idea for the three different splitters so there's a really tall one that's uh, made for when the table saw blade is fully extended, then some, some sort of medium height, and then you have a short one that you can use for either really thin material um, or if you don't want to use the guard. Um, this is really then just the splitter and doesn't give you the capability uh, to attach the, the pretty nice guard here. I, I actually really like it. Uh, so he sent me the paper templates, then I went ahead and used the paper templates to make um, uh, very thin plywood prototypes so I can attach it to my saw. And uh, originally, uh, if I could find this, oh here we go. Originally those saws actually came with a steel splitter that also was able to um, accept a guard. And it was mounted right back here in between those two washers and had a bolt with a spring on it. So you would have to, you know, decide whether or not you want the guard on and the, and the splitter or not. It was a pretty tall um, splitter and then a bracket that goes to the back of the saw. A lot of um, 
woodworkers don't like it or didn't like it so they took it off and then pretty much ran the saw without any splitter or riving knife or any kind of safety device that would help you with a kickback um, but this this um, attachment point here is attached to the trunnion or to the to the piece that actually moves with a table saw blade it doesn't go up and down not like a riving knife so we don't have the advantage of uh, the riving knife going up and down with a blade it's stationary it doesn't move with the blade up and down but it goes and changes the angle with a with a blade and um, yeah originally it's it's kind of a bolt spring combination and you would always have to have a wrench available to tighten it up or loosen it up if you want to take it off uh, Lee sent me this this uh, little handle that has this um, ratcheting function so you can loosen it up and tighten it up without a tool and then you just pick whatever splitter you want the short one for you know the non-through cuts or the cuts of really thin material where you just don't want to have the huge guard on it or then the different two sizes we're still somewhat in a prototype stage so i i had to make a couple modifications to make it perfectly fit my saw but then um, you also have to keep in mind that all those pa parts here are just cast iron and um, a lot of the surfaces are not machined so they are just how they came out of the out of the mold and um, so not every saw is going to be exactly the same so i just modified uh, this a little bit was able to um, now attach it without having any play really so you, you push it in into position and then you just grab your little handle there tighten it up and then you can move the handle out of the way and then it's pretty solid I mean I cannot yank it out of position and then um, I just have this old aluminum insert here it's not a um, very fancy planning on making some new ones oh. so here we go and um, yeah, how this is all built is that uh, you can very easily now attach the the guard to it this whole kit also comes with um, the anti-kickback claws here as you can see they're spring-loaded um, they, they they are usually suited best for the really tall one or else you have a lot of tension on them already so the, the tallest splitter is probably the best choice for when you want to use those claws Here, let me take the medium one out so move the handle loosen up take out and you can almost do it with one hand I mean not almost you can do it with one hand uh, and move the handle out of the way and solid and um, now let's see if I can put that also on there so this is pretty much the the mounting bracket to accept the uh, to accept the guard on top uh, you just have to have it loose enough so that uh, the splitter fits in between those two red pieces of course I didn't loosen it up enough but yeah here we go and then you just tighten those those knobs put your two claws there's some two little stop screws that keep them from swinging further forward oh you know what I just forgot something so you slide off and I'll put the insert in there and then here on this particular old saw um, the insert is just held down by by some screws uh, I usually only put the back one in there that's the most concerning one so that uh, this cannot be you know thrown out of the position and now let's let's put the guard on so you have an idea what that looks like there we go so two claws and you don't have to use the claws I mean they are removable for sure and then um, look at this nicely made clear plexiglass guard so your 
hook it on in the back first like so and then slide it forward and then it slides into position and then there is a um, clip function here that kind of secures it into position so now it can still go up and down but you cannot take it off or accidentally it cannot come off and then uh, this here is a I want to say two and a half inch um, connection so that you can put your hose from your shop vac or from your dust collection system right on there and uh, then we're ready to go already so short one medium size and then the tall one that uh, you can also put uh, the anti-kickback claws on it everything seems to be made really well uh, you know the little brass pieces that kind of create the spacer for for the guard and the claws and this um, red um, mounting bracket they seem to be powder coated and then uh, the the splitters themselves they are cut out of uh, stainless steel very well made when, when it arrived here at my house and you know I, I work with Lee a little bit so that we can get the uh, this product into the prototype stage so this is just the prototype I, I bet um, once Lee has all the little um, imperfections figured out this is going to be a really solid package and uh, this is the only way how you can really get a, a splitter for those old old craftsman table saws that that make this really a usable tool you know if, if you want some safety some features that only modern saws have like a splitter anti-kick back uh, claws and a decent uh, way of connecting a um, dust collection to it this is the way to go I, I mean i'm really really impressed with the quality how this is all machined and put together and built and uh yeah this uh definitely was worth the effort i mean i i spent a few hours on uh, uh making the uh, plywood prototypes out of his paper templates to see if it would fit and then i made a couple suggestions for some changes and then he whipped that up and within a week i had this kid here in front of me to try it out and uh, then i told him that there's still a, a few little imperfections um you know uh, for example with um the, the shorter the medium size splitter um, this edge back here was actually kind of going down straight line and it was interfering with the insert um, so he knows that and he's going to look into that and he's going to change his layout and um, and then uh, the attachment point where the splitter attaches to the trunnion surface there um, this this slot was not quite deep enough so I filed that out a little bit and I let him know and he's going to implement that into the final product but yeah this is this is really solid there's there's just no no problem with anything and uh, here let me bring the, the the blade up all the way oh that's down and this is up and I know you guys are the probably the much better woodworkers and you would never have a table saw blade from a uh, harbor freight in there but i do it's a 50 tooth so like a general purpose and um i don't know if you guys can see that there clearly but there's a good eh, i want to say maybe close to a quarter of an inch gap between the top of the blade and the edge of the um of the splitter there and then even the claws they they are so well retained with a spring and those two little stop screws that even if they are pushed sideways they will not get in contact with a blade so i mean that is some really smart design this is really nice you see the slot there now it glides up and down also the the guard itself even though it is attached to the top of the um splitter which if i mean if you're yanking around on it like i do it right now you can get a little bit of some movement out of it but unless you're really hitting it you will not get the splitter to touch the blade that is really nice too and then um you know 
the suction from the top. I know the, the perfect um, dust collection is always to the bottom because the teeth always want to, you know, put the, put the dust all into the bottom of the table saw. Uh, what I did is the Harbor Freight solution. You know, my, my table saw didn't come with a stand and I don't have a spot on my um, workbench to put it. So I bought this, what is it, $37 stand and then they have a $6 little canvas bag that you can attach to the bottom. So whatever my dust collection up top doesn't suck, um, it will fall to the bottom and then will collect in this bag. So I think we're, we're set up pretty well. Um, but yeah, I, I really wanna recommend to you guys this, this product, the sharkguard.com. And uh, Lee was my point of contact there and uh, you know, I kind of helped him along and uh, turned out great. I'm, I'm really happy, really pleased with it. I already made a few cuts of pretty uh, thick stock material. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. The cloths barely leave any marks on the wood. So, I mean, if you're doing some super fine woodworking for like a pristine project, you might not want to use the cloths, but really just having the, the splitter here in the back and uh, to, to keep your two pieces of wood kind of to, to um, twist and warp and touch the back of the blade just to avoid kickback, this is perfect. And, uh, and then the, the, the tool-less way of taking this whole thing apart, so take my hose off, then you have this little retaining mechanism here. So you, you flip the stainless steel bracket up and then you just slide it up and slide it back and take it off. And then if you really want to change the splitter, maybe I should put the blade down, huh? Before I run around like uh, someone tried to butcher me. Okay, put the blade down. Sorry, it's all one-handed operation here. This is how I make my YouTube videos. That's why I probably only have 71 subscribers. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, you just loosen up those uh, thumb screws here, slide it back a little bit, take it out, and there it is. And then um, take your insert out. I'm probably gonna get one of those uh, polymer inserts for it, and then make a, a zero clearance insert as well. So, and then you have this, uh, this little ratcheting toolless removal handle and slide it out and that's it and um, yeah it's shaped so that you have the bolt in here and then this step sits on a step down in the saw which is uh, yeah the cast surface um, yeah you might have to you know take a file to make it perfectly fit for your saw but uh, maybe Lee comes up with a design that will be kind of very universal um, those are 1960s 1950s tools so don't expect perfection from the the tool side but the product itself is really amazing and it's a good value and it adds so much safety to it you know splitter to keep the wood apart in the in the rear there the the anti-kickback uh, claws if if you do a lot of uh cutting off dimensional lumber like you run two by fours through your table saw all day long where it doesn't matter if if you have a little scratch on your wood surface this is perfect and then the guard is is done really really well i mean this is some high quality work here you know all the parts fit very well the screws nuts and spacers here in the front is a spacer that actually swivels so it it rolls over your wood surface <laughs> it's all one-handed here sorry um you know and uh, they have been in business for a while they have a bunch of different models delta and uh i think i saw saw stop on there there's this bunch of different uh table saw brands that you can buy those aftermarket guards for and uh yeah i guess i helped uh, them along to add another table saw to the list of uh supported machines so it's kind of cool so a 
27520 Craftsman Table Saw. If you need a um, guard for it or a splitter, ask the guys at uh, shardguard.com. All right, I hope you like this video. I'm pretty long now, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, this is my little table saw that I just put together. I'm really happy with it. I really like this fence system. It's uh, it's um, controlled with a cable system. So it has a little, uh, yeah, these, these little, uh, whatchamacallit, little wheels here um, that uh, the cable runs in. And so if you move this side of the fence, the other side, the other end is also forced the same direction. And you can adjust that pretty well. So it's parallel to your blade. And the cable system really forces it to stay parallel. And then um, the, the clamping action here with a handle, it actually clamps down both ends. Not just one end, but both ends. So this here doesn't move and the other end doesn't move either. And you can adjust how much it actually clamps down on, on the rail here. The rail is old, it's a little ugly, but I coated it all nicely in some uh, paste wax. So it's all really smooth. Yeah, I uh, hope you guys like this video and maybe get some ideas on how you want to restore your old Craftsman table saw that you bought off of Craigslist for $45. Those machines are actually really usable, really, really usable. Mine is a one and a half horse um, 220 motor. So it's like a 228 amp motor that I put uh, new pulleys on. Bought some pulleys at Tractor Supply. Um, with those pulleys, actually, you can also manipulate the RPMs that your table saw blade is running at. Um, they say that um, for most wood cutting, its uh, best speed is when you reach about 150 feet per minute, um, you know, tooth speed. And um, mine was set up a little high, so I, I brought it down by, by changing the, the, the pulleys. And they're brand new. They're uh, die cast aluminum. And then I put a new belt on. It's actually really quiet. It's, it's really quiet. So, yeah. And those old table saws are really forgiving. You know, if you mess up, it's not a huge investment. We're talking about a few grand if you buy a decent new table saw, you know. If you buy one of those saw stop table saws, I don't even know if they're starting in the $2,000 range. It's more like in the, in the $3,000 range. And, uh, you know, you can add a couple safety features to even the oldest table saw, like this pedal switch and then the splitter. And, uh, yeah, and now I'm just rambling. So I'm going to shut up and shut this video down, and uh, I will see you next time. Take care.